subscribe and click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everyone and welcome back to the course. During this course, we've used different templates and you should know by now all of the clever things that you can do with templates and use them as the basis of some really sophisticated drawings. But the one thing we haven't yet done with templates is create our own custom template. Now the template that we're gonna be creating will be something reasonably simple, but it will give you an idea of the things that you need to be aware of if you choose to do this. So really, I just want to give you a bit of a flavor as to how to create a template. Now the requirement for this particular template is gonna be straightforward. So let's say that in my company, each head of department needs to prepare a cross-functional flowchart covering part of our main business processes that they are responsible for. So I want to create a template that gives each head of department a custom flowchart to use as their starting point. So let's start this process by going up to File and down to New, and we're looking for the cross-functional flowchart, which is just there. Now for this one, we're going to use a different flowchart to what we used last time. Let's go for this one here, the vertical cross-functional flowchart. I'm going to use US units and click on create to load up that template. Now this template that I'm going to be creating, I'm going to send out to each of the heads of department. So I want to provide them with a really good functional template that they can each use to complete the information for their specific team. But in general, the look and feel is going to be consistent across all of the teams. So the first thing I'm probably going to want to do here with this template is get rid of things that they're not going to need. So I'm going to delete out this little tips pane or this help pane on the right hand side. I'm going to choose a nice theme to apply to this template. And I'm also going to make sure that each of the swim lanes has the correct titles. I'm going to put a copyright notice in and also a background for this template. So first things first, let's get rid of this tips pane over at the side. I can click to select and just hit that delete key. The next thing I'm going to do is apply a background. So for this, we're going to jump up to the design tab and click on the backgrounds drop down. And I think I'm going to apply this one just here, center gradient. And let's just zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Next, I'm going to select a theme. So let's go up to our themes gallery and I could possibly choose one of these hand drawn themes because at the moment this is in the drafting process. So let's go for this one. And then I'm going to put a copyright notice on this diagram and I'm going to put it in the bottom corner. Now this is a fairly simple process. We just need to insert a text box. So I'm going to draw that down here in the corner and remember, we can use our autocorrect to insert a symbol, bracket C bracket, and hit space to change that to a copyright symbol. And then I'm just going to put Northwind Inc. Now that's a little bit small for my liking, so let's select the text and let's just make some changes. So I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. And let's move it down into the corner. And there we go, I think that's good enough. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to send this little copyright to the back. So if you remember when we were talking about Z position. So up to my arrange group and let's click on send to back. Now nothing's changed on here because it essentially is already at the back. I just want to make sure that anything that gets layered on top of it appears in front of the copyright symbol. And what I'm also going to do is assign this little copyright notice to a layer. So with the copyright selected, up to layers in the editing group and select assign to layer. Now I don't want to assign it to the flowchart or connect to layer. I want to create a new layer and we're going to call this copyright and click on OK. Copyright is automatically selected. Click on OK and I now have this on its own separate layer. And the final thing I'm going to do with this is back up to layer again and I'm going to jump into layer properties and I'm going to say that I want to lock the copyright layer. So that's just going to prevent anybody from making any changes to this specific layer and click on OK. So now if we take a look at the actual flowchart and specifically what we call our starting shapes. 
Now the idea of this flowchart is to show people how to use the shapes that will be part of the flowchart. And you can see at the top my swim lanes are labelled function 1, function 2, function 3 and function 4. Now there's actually going to be five functions that I need them to cater for, so I'm going to need to add another swim lane. So again, we've seen how we can do this. There are a couple of different ways. I can use the cross-functional flowchart ribbon and select swim lane. Alternatively, I can use the stencil and drag the swim lane vertical onto the drawing. And just to aid quickness, I'm going to copy and paste these three shapes into this swim lane that I've just added. So let's select them. Now obviously at this moment in time this isn't a particularly accurate flowchart that I'm creating. I just want to give you some ideas of the things you, you can do to make a template and then we're going to take a look at saving it. So another thing I'm probably going to want to do is add in the titles for each of these swim lanes. So this is just a simple case of double clicking and then changing the text. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'll join you back here in a couple of seconds. Now the final thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up a facility in this template whereby each head of department can show which section their chart is for. So when they are preparing the document, what I want them to do is put their section name in the company information for their drawing. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to double click in this title area just to highlight that title. I'm going to go to the insert tab and I'm going to insert a field. Now I'm going to use one of the document info properties or fields and the field I'm going to use here is the company name and click on OK. And you can see it's pulled through sample company. Now if you're confused as to where it's getting this name from, it's getting it from the document properties. So if we jump up to file and go down into info and take a look at these properties, you can see company says sample company. So basically what I want the heads of each team to do is enter in the name of their team so that that pulls through into the title of the template. And you'll notice that if I change this to something else, so let's just say, so let's just say admin team and click on the back arrow, it's going to update and pull that information through. So now that I pretty much have the look and feel and the starting shapes established, I need to make sure I have open the correct stencils that they're going to need in this template. And really for this particular template, all they really need is the cross-functional flowchart shapes, which I have open, and the basic flowchart shapes as well. So I don't really need to do anything here because they're both already open. Now the final thing I really need to do here once I'm happy with this template is store it as a custom template. And this part is really important. If you want this template to appear on the new screen to make it really easy to access, you need to store templates in a location that is suitable for their storage and tell Visio where that location is. So first of all, let's save this template. I'm going to go up to File and down to Save As. And I'm going to save this into the Course Files folder. Now just to keep all of my templates together, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it Northwind Templates. And then I need to change my Save As file type to Visio Template and then give my template a name and then click on Save. Now in order to make this template appear when I go into New, I need to first jump up into File and then down into Options. And on the advanced page, right at the bottom, you'll see you have a button for file locations. And one of the fields that we have here is templates. Now it may look on the surface that you can only have one location where you store your templates, but you can in fact have more than one. You, you just separate the different locations with semicolons. So I need to tell Visio where I'm storing my templates. So let's click on the ellipses and I'm going to navigate to my course files folder. Now a little word of warning here, which is very important. You might be tempted to browse to the Northwind templates folder. And my response to that is don't. You basically need to stop one level above the subfolder. So I'm not going to click on that. I'm just going to say select and then click on OK and OK again. So now if I jump up to File and go down to New, 
and then scroll down, what you'll notice is that at the bottom here, I'm currently looking at the office templates, but I have another little tab here called categories. If I click on categories, you'll see that now there is my Northwind templates folder. If I double click on it, there is my template. So now if you're one of the heads of the team and you want to use this template, all you need to do is click on create, load the template up, complete it for your section in the company, and then save it as a new drawing. That is it for this lesson. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.